I'm kind of dumb. You're kind of dumb. You're kind of dumb. Oh, you hot hands. In a perfect world, I would just put my dog outside and let her eat. But if it's above 80 degrees, I don't feel comfortable leaving her outside for more than about five minutes. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be doing something really fun and we're gonna be talking about my Houston plant haul. Now, I am very excited because I got some really cool plants that I have never seen in person before, some that I honestly didn't even know existed. And I'm just really excited to share them with you guys and just to see like, Maybe if anyone has any care tips for them or if anyone just wants to chit chat about how cool some of these plants are. If you're new here and you don't know why a Houston plant haul would be special in the slightest bit, it is because my family went down to Galveston for about five days and during the time that we were down there, I decided to kind of break away for a couple hours, drive up to Houston, and just do a little bit of plant shopping just to see what the scene looked like down there as opposed to what it looks like here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I am pleasantly, pleasantly happy with everything that I found. And I'm just gonna cut right to it and just start talking about the plants and the plant shops that I went to. In total, I went to three different shops. I went to Dirtbag, The Plant Project in Houston, and The Floriculture. I didn't buy a plant from every single shop, but I did purchase one plant from Dirtbag and I purchased a handful of plants from The Floriculture. So I'll start with the first one, which is from Dirt Bag. It is this very beautiful philodendron fuzzy petiole. Now this one is so cool to me because it quite literally, for its namesake, it has a fuzzy petiole. I think this is a really neat plant. It's reminding me a lot of the philodendron gloriosum. And I just think it is so interesting. So I'm really excited to have something a little bit unique to what I have because most of my philodendron are trailing and I'm really excited to see how this one grows. This one looks like it's already pretty prolific because it, it has three new, it has three new growth points on it and I just think it's so cool. I also think that the foliage is really beautiful with how deep the green is and just, I don't know, this is so interesting and I'm just so, I'm just really excited to see how it behaves for me and if it is happy for me or if it just like completely just dies. The next plant I got is from the Floriculture and this is where the rest of the plants are from and yes, they're all Hoyas and yes, I know, but I love Hoyas and I am not going to argue with anyone about that. I love them, I think they're great. This next plant I got is a Hoya sunrise i think hoya sunrise are so cool because of the sun stressing and the sun stressing to me is just out of this world so stinking beautiful and i'm really hoping i can get this one to be a little sun stressed just because i love the way it looks i am actually really excited to see this and have this just because i've never actually seen this in person before and it was a wish list plant for me i didn't realize that the leaves were going to be pretty substantial, but I am so happy because I don't have a Hoya like this. I don't know much about the Sunrise. I don't know if it is one that is a hybrid of two other Hoyas or what, but it is so beautiful. And I'm really excited to see this pop off and start growing for me. This next plant has seen some better days, but it is my Hoya Callistophylla. I am so in love with this Callistophylla. I've never seen a Callistophylla in person before, really. But I've also never seen a Hoya that was, you know, a pale green with this deep veination on it. I think that this is just so interesting. And it has seen better days because it's been in a paper bag for a couple days now and i'm just not getting it out but it is so beautiful i'm so excited for these for this runner to start filling out and i'm also so excited to see it grow just because it is so 
beautiful. The leaves are thick. They're kind of lance shaped and also they're just that bright color. I've never seen a Hoya with a brightly colored leaf before in this deep veination. So I'm really excited to see how this one also behaves for me. My next plant isn't, I don't think it's anything special, but it's special to me. And it is the Hoya Bertoniae. Now this one, I love, again, I love the leaves on it. I think that this is so interesting and I just love how delicate it is as it's trailing over this nursery pot. I am so excited to get this into a terracotta pot. I think it's going to look so beautiful and I'm really just, I'm just in awe of how delicate these leaves are. They're so so beautiful. This one strikes me as one that's going to be easy to grow, that's going to be growing left and right, new leaves, and I suspect that this one is probably going to bloom for me within the next year. So I'm hoping that this one does bloom for me. This one also looks like it will sun stress um, and turn like that beautiful deep red like the sunrise does. So I'm excited to see how this one if it will do that for me and then i'm excited to see if this one will also bloom for me because it's so beautiful my last plant in this plant haul is this very beautiful hoya viola it looks like it's a little bit lighter in color and also has that deep veination that the callistophylla has that is so beautiful but this was such a cool concept to me because at the flora project they had a wall of propagations that they were selling for anywhere between five dollars to 45 dollars and they were rooted unrooted and i just love the concept of that because if anything that is so cool to have like a propagation station like that in your home i thought that this was really interesting and i really thought that this was really beautiful and honestly this plant itself like it's just really unique and again like i don't have a hoya that has big fat leaves like this one and I'm excited to get this one propagating a little bit more and just to see like how this one again how it grows for me and just to see if this one will bloom for me sometime this year or maybe even next year the one downside of traveling with a plant like this though is that it does require a lot of a lot of planning I wish I had put this like in a like a little plastic cup and just transported it that way because I did end up spilling water on myself on the way home from Houston and I actually spilled water just now from when I was taking it out of the bag. So that is something to consider if you do go somewhere and you're buying a plant that is from somebody's propagation wall, if they do have something like that going on, that is something to consider because if it can be a lot and especially if you're driving a four and a half hour road trip, it can it can get messy really quickly. All right, everyone, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, make sure you give it a comment, a like, and a subscribe. All of it means the absolute world to me. And if you'd like to check out some more planty content, I'm going to leave my Instagram handle here. You can come hang out. Tell me what you think about Hoyas, or if you think Hoya lovers are a cult, or if they're your favorite genus, or maybe if you have care tips, or you just want to talk about plants, I look at pictures of plants. Whatever works. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye.